Welcome to Jags Drive Time with Ashlyn Sullivan, Sullivan John Osher, Osher, and Brian Sexton. Wow. Jags Drive Time starts right now. Welcome in Jaguars drive time rookie mini camp in the books and I laugh every time I see that ending shot of just the hair blowing in the breeze it just is the perfect way to end Trevor Lawrence's first weekend as an official Jacksonville Jaguar on the field and we will talk all about it right here on Jags drive time I'm here with Brian Sexton and John Osier Hola. and what a surprise we're all here together nice. in person we're all on the desk you guys Back look so different in person it is funny how you, we have this routine because we've been doing this for a couple of years and then all of a sudden it changed mm -hmm. and you kind of get used to that. I know it. Kind of get used to walking up the stairs, not fighting any traffic to get to my office, clicking it on. Hey, yeah. can you hear me? Can you hear me? My big thing was the slippers. I will miss not being able to wear slippers in the stadium. The I'm wearing slippers right now. That's not allowed. <laughs> that is against the rules. All right. All right, guys. Working mini camp in the books and it was a small rookie class. So we did our best to try to see what was happening at practice. And like we said, it's football in pajamas. We didn't learn much, but it, it was cool to see Urban Meyer's first practice as an NFL head coach. You know, and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bleed into big thing one here just a little bit. You felt it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you saw it, but you felt it at the same time. There was a different aura, if that's the right word, atmosphere, if you choose, to the practice field not to not to be overly dramatic but it was different yeah and and you would expect it i'm very anxious after saturday's practice urban meyer sort of went out of his way to say this was not like a a real jaguars practice they had had to back the tempo off a little bit because a couple of guys had pulled up which you expect in a rookie minicamp on friday and he said a jaguars practice starts next week so I think what we're saying is, if that wasn't a Jaguars practice, once you see them really going, once you see them going full tempo, uh, the word is that's how he practices. It's it, it's all out. He wants speed. He wants them to play fast, which doesn't necessarily mean four four forties, but it right. means going after the ball. Mm -hmm. You would anticipate the practices reflect that, and uh, you know. So next week at OTAs and the one we get to see. That's what we'll be watching. Dive in, Schlin, because I've got I've got some some distinct thoughts on the culture. You've got some things to say. All right, like we said, big thing one is culture. We've seen the shift in the building, and we've heard Coach Meyer talk about it. But last weekend was our first chance to actually see this culture change on the field, and it was Trevor Lawrence's first practice as an official Jacksonville Jaguar. And expectations are very clear. But never, you know, the mindset never changes. You're always expecting to win, and you prepare to win. So. I think that's why they brought me here. They didn't bring me here to expect to lose. And I know we got a lot of guys here that are, that are ready to win and, and want to win. So um, we're, we're on the right track for sure. All right, now we go to another big headline over the weekend, and we're going to call it fake news because it is the hoopla that is Travis Etienne getting reps at wide receiver and the backlash, I guess you can say, of what came from it. So let's hear straight from the source what Coach Meyer said after practice about Travis Etienne's multiple roles. If you saw Travis was getting most of his reps today at wide receiver, um, we're trying, you know, he's the leading rusher in ACC history. So for him to run inside zone and power and zone right now, we thought let's just, uh, at the worst case scenario, you have a running back with skill set of a wide receiver. Best case scenario, you have a, a hybrid player that can do both. And that's what we're hoping to develop out of Travis. And finally, big thing three is some home runs. We're seeing some potential with these draft picks on the field. And if it plays out and they reach the potential we think they could make, it is a home run because you're getting so much value for where they were drafted. Walker Little is a great example of this. 
Uh, we just believe he was uh, he would have been a first rounder had he been never had that knee injury. At one point, he was one of the top tackles in the country, and and that was really hard because you never saw him until they, they got here. You know, you just don't know what their legs look like, etc. And then when he got here, you're like, you know, 20% body fat is pretty good for a 330-pound uh, man. <laughs> All right, let's go back up to big thing one. That is our biggest thought is how different this practice looked. And I will say there was only, I think, 18 guys on the field. But the biggest difference I noticed, guys, is there was zero standing around. There was no wasted time. Water breaks were timed. They were letting know that there was 10 seconds left in that water break. It was planned out to the second. Yeah, and, and people might get the impression that it was frenetic because they wanted to use every single mm -hmm. second. But, you know... That was my distinct thought that it was calm, right? Yeah. I mean, they moved with purpose, and everything had its its outcome designed, right? They, they went on the field and practiced this last week. The coaches did, right? They wanted to make sure that they made the most of their time. But it wasn't frantic. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't yeah. frantic. There wasn't a lot of yelling. And that was where I came away with that the culture had shifted already because there's an expectation. We're building a winning program here because – that's what Urban had done at Ohio State. He, you know, not that they didn't have a winning one before, but Ohio State and at, at mm -hmm. Florida. And here comes uh, Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. All they've known is success, right, in their stops. And it's almost the expectation, John. Yeah, this is what we do to win because this is what we've always done. Well, it's our chance to see it. We've heard this message already from Urban when he's talked about Everything needs to be elite. If it's not elite, then why isn't it elite? Right. Um, when he's talked about the facilities, when he's talked about the strength or, or the uh, sports performance program, now we've sort of seen a tangible example of it. And, you know, it, it's uh, I, uh, I tend not to go overboard about a rookie camp practice, but we saw this weekend what they're going to want to try to do and the way it's going to be structured. Again, I anticipate learning much more about this during OTAs. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if training camp will be quite as uh, – I guess there might be a longer water break <laughs> during training camp because yeah, it was guys. nice out there on Saturday. It was. But it, it's uh, – you know, it, I don't want to overplay it, but you can certainly see examples of how they're going to be organized and how they're going to try to be efficient. Yeah, it was more so we heard Coach Meyer always say that I expect a lot out of my coaches and I want my coaches to be at the highest level. And even with it only being, for example, George Warhop, there were only two offensive linemen in these drills, mm -hmm. but he is hands on right in these drills, you know, expecting a tongue, amping them up. It was just it was different. You could tell that Coach Meyer is expecting a ton out of these guys and they're living up to it. Well, and John's right. You know, you don't want to take too much away. You don't mm -hmm. want to read too much into a, a rookie minicamp with 18 guys. Yeah. So, you know, talking about the big picture things, the cultural things. Mm -hmm. But you could look and see the intensity with which the practices are going to be conducted. Even it's just a microcosm. It's just a little glimpse of it. But imagine when you have everyone on the field at the same time, the entire oh, yeah. team. It'll be completely different. Yes, so let's go to the drama, we're going to call it, of Travis Etienne. And we go back when Travis Etienne was drafted and Coach Meyer came to the podium and he said we're going to use him as an offensive weapon. We didn't draft him just to be a running back. So now rookie minicamp also noted that Trevor Lawrence cannot do handoffs right now. So uh, we never saw anything wrong with it. Apparently the country does, and he's getting all this backlash for it, and we really can't figure out why. I got it. Okay, handle it. Look, I, you know me, Brian. <laughs> I do. I answer questions every day on this team in the Ozone. So for 10 years with a losing team for the most part, you get some controversies and you get some ridiculousness. This is off the charts to me. <laughs> the fact that people are trying to use this, and I get people want to criticize Urban Meyer. That's the thing. He's a polarizing figure. It's so the, the national NFL do. media is looking for a way to say, Oh, this guy's a college coach. He didn't know what he's doing. From the time they drafted ETN, they said he was going to be a wide receiver slash running back. He even used the word slash. Secondly, when they drafted him, uh, the Saturday of the draft, Urban went so far as to say may not have drafted him if he had been just a running back. They see this guy as a weapon. When would you have proposed <laughs> that he start running wide receiver routes? Halloween? That seems like put on a mask and do it. Yeah, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, it, it's this was the time 
Trevor Lawrence wasn't handing off. And as he said, sometimes with Irvin, he'll start in an answer and he'll say a glimpse and he doesn't finish the thought. So it doesn't get written that way. But he said it on this on this soundbite. Mm-hmm. Inside draws, power running, and he didn't finish it. But I think what he was going to say was, why would we bother having him work on that during this rookie camp when there's no contact, you're not going to learn anything about it. Let him work at wide receiver where he's not as experienced. It was completely logical that they do that. And, Shalyn, get off my lawn. I thought I knew you, John. <laughs> it was fault. I, I thought I knew you, and then I just noticed you, you're an Iron Man. I had never seen those before. Are those Iron new Man. glasses? Well, they're they're oh $35. Glasses. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Velvet, you Velvet think Pumper. you know somebody. You sit next to them all these years, and then you realize they are an Iron Man. I'm I've Iron got this Man. one, too. Um, happiness doesn't trend, right? I mean, it, we could all agree that it's really not that big of a deal <laughs> that you've got an offensive player who has the capability to do more than just take the handoff, so you're going to figure out how to use him. Everyone, even the people who were on ESPN before we went on the oh air, my were, gosh. they all know this. Yeah. But if we're if, if everyone's agreeing, right, if there isn't one person, it was Teddy Bruschi, who's just crucifying the decision, you're thinking, why? What's the but big deal? But it's not deal? even a decision. It, but it's it, being interpreted that he's moving to wide receiver. Without he's not a, moving well, to wide receiver. Who cares if he is? I right. Mean, what if he's drafted, good? Yeah. They drafted him with the idea that they were going to use him a particular way. Teddy Bruschi doesn't know what that way is. I guess my point is is that Twitter doesn't work without conflict. Mm-hmm. And so we invent these conflicts. The one about the, the, the quarterback turned tight end, oh, about yeah. this. All of those are conflict. But it drives in an otherwise slow time of year. It drives the NFL machine through social media and gets it there. But it's just, who cares? Whatever they're doing right now, they're doing because they've got a plan to try to make it work. And I don't see any conflict with it at all. Let's see what happens when the season starts. Then you can have some legitimate arguments about it. And if the season yeah. starts when they want to use him at running back, you know what they'll say? Hey, get behind the quarterback where you've been all your life. Right. And, and here's the ball, out. run it. And by the You're way, really he was, good. He's the all-time leading rusher in ACC history. Figure right? it out. Oh, gosh. All right. I'll take a deep breath. I just uh, – right, yeah. It's just not that big of a deal. Can uh, I say something about Walker Little? Yes. I was going to mention the happiness – this is a happiness transition right here. It really is because, you know, the Jaguars for, throughout the years, John, have tried to find a replacement for Tony Baselli. And, I mean, it was, remember Mike Pearson they drafted from the University of Florida? Well, you were already gone. You mm-hmm. were in Indianapolis at the time. And, and just over and over and over, Khalif Barnes in, uh, in 2005. I mean, they were – who's the next great left tackle? And Cam Robinson at one point was thought to be that guy. Um, I saw him on Saturday, and again <laughs> – I'm looking at him from a potential standpoint because he wasn't holding off uh, pass rushers, but just he's got the body for it. He was made to be a left tackle. If you look at Trevor Lawrence and say that guy's a quarterback, you look at Walker Little and go, that guy's a left tackle. He hit the bags, and it was bang. And from 20 yards away, (laughs) you could hear him with the heavy hands that Urban Meyer mentioned in there. Uh, Jeff Lagerman was talking, and and he could get down and get his – Get so deep in the stance, which six foot seven guys struggle with, yeah. right? That he could put his butt on the ground and still pivot his torso. And a guy like Lagerman looks and goes, "Okay, if I'm a pass rusher looking at that kind of flexibility, I know there are some moves that I can't make on this guy because he's got rare physical traits." Again, you didn't see him lining up against Josh Allen, but you didn't need to to say that's probably the first guy they've had that would qualify to replace Tony Baselli. Yeah, it was very impressive, and we had someone tell us that you could hear his hands hitting the bag from off the field. Yeah. Definitely an aggressive guy, so we're looking forward to seeing more from Walker Little. But he's not the only one. Real quick, Jay tu- Jay, t- we didn't see Jay Tufele, yep. but you could see him when he walked through the hallway. I mean, Big dude. Yeah, there are, um, there are some really promising young mm-hmm. players on this team and excited to see them as they integrate with the, the veterans. Yep. Well, they drafted Blue Chip, so they're going to look impressive right now. And there's no reason to think that they won't play well on the field. This is what they drafted. They drafted guys who you can easily project being very good. Absolutely. OTAs start next week, so we'll be able to see them back on the field yet again. When we come back, we go around the league here on Jaguars Drive Time. Stay with us. Jags Drive Time is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. By Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And Baptist Health. Changing healthcare for good.
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa debit card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi, folks. Frank Franzi here for the best barbecue in town. That is Bono's. Head to Bono's today. 15 locations on the First Coast and six more at TIAA Bank Field. You see, Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You want great barbecue, you want Bono's. Plenty of parking, clean family restaurants, and oh, by the way, the best barbecue you have ever had. So if you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today, the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Dreamfinders Homes has a simple commitment to their home buyers. Deliver unsurpassed quality, uncompromising value, and an extraordinary level of customization you simply won't find with other home builders. With over 40 communities to choose from, you'll find a location you love and the home of your dreams. Dreamfinders has townhomes, single-family homes, and custom estate homes starting from the high 100s and a wide selection of move-in ready homes. Quality, value, customization, that's the Dreamfinders difference. Call 904-738-0165 or online at dreamfindershomes.com. Dreamfinders Homes, the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Price is subject to change without notice equal housing opportunity welcome to a new era of jaguars football the reload has begun beginning with new head coach urban meyer don't miss out on the best seats before they're gone lock in your tickets now for the 2021 season at jaguars.com to get here to become a pro it was always about repetition We've done whatever we've done a million times. So to get him out there and practice and practice him exclusively at the, running, at the receiver position, I'm okay with it because running back comes naturally to him. That position for me has always been 90% instinctive, 10% of, of learning the assignment and protecting the quarterback. So he'll never lose that. So lining him up at receiver is just going to make him a better player overall. Running back great Fred Taylor talking Travis Etienne at the J Fun. Thanks to me, O'Brien, for that video. And, John, it's like he listened to you. That running back kind of sort of comes natural. Fred's and it's smart, okay. Fred's a smart man. And <laughs> He's been there. If, if, he, if you've been around this league at all, as he said, running back is an instinctive position. I don't say it's easy to learn, but out of all the positions, it's the one that everybody said for years, even these guys who were tweeting the criticism, you come in, if you can run, you can run. Right. There's some pass blocking to learn. There's scheme stuff to learn. For the most part, how many rookies make an impact running back? Many, many, many. How many do it wide receiver? Many fewer until recently. So if, if, if there's a tricky part of his transition, it's going to be the receiver position. Well, it doesn't, yeah, yeah. remember <laughs> now. And, and people know the name Percy Harvin from Florida. Yep. And Curtis Samuel was the guy at Ohio State. And Paris Warren was the guy at Utah. I mean, um, Urban said on Saturday afternoon, you know, we've always had this guy, this guy that can do multiple things. And I, because I guess I follow Kansas City because my family's from there, I, I kind of see him being used like Tyreek Hill was. Now Tyreek is an all-pro receiver. But, you know, they lined him up in the backfield. They put it, they flexed him in, in the tight end position. Uh, they put him in the slot. I mean, they did all kinds of things because his speed was so dangerous, they made the defense account for him to get mismatches. That's the name of the game. You line him up in multiple spots and get him against the linebacker or against a, a big safety, mm -hmm. you're going to create some mismatches. That's what he is. He's an offensive mismatch waiting to happen. I'm worked up against him. Oh, God. I didn't <laughs> uh, mean for this okay. to happen. <laughs> if this was LaVisca Chenault. People loved it. And yeah. Trevor Lawrence's right arm had fallen off. Oh, my. What during what rookie saying? For rookie camp, right? How did it fall and off? And he couldn't throw. It, point being, if Trevor Lawrence couldn't throw <laughs> – would anybody have wanted LaVisca Ch uh, Chenault running routes? You'd put him behind center and let him work at running back a little bit. Yeah. Because that's what, you know, it, Trevor Lawrence couldn't hand off this weekend. So why would you work him at, at running back? To stand around? You kind of just stand around. Sell programs? Yeah. There's no programs. There's a couple of media guys out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absurd. It's another way to get a great player on the field. And as many ways that you can have James Robinson and Travis Etienne on the field at the same time, I think that's a wise course of action to pursue. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go around the league. Lots of things going on in the NFL right now. We will go to Green Bay to look at this Packers quarterback situation. It gets 
even better with the Aaron Rodgers, I'm just going to call it drama. It's a lot up in the air about what's coming this season. And they go ahead and they sign Blake Bortles. And the Packers head coach says this in a press conference saying the man led him to an AFC championship. I know he gets to play. And we look at this connection with Green Bay's offensive coordinator, Nate Hackett. And it's very clear <laughs> why this happened. So we're curious to see how this shakes out. I don't think they're going to trade Aaron Rodgers, but... This quarterback room is something right now. Yeah, uh, Bortles is a tough guy, uh, but he'll go up there and execute the offense that Nate Hackett has until Aaron Rodgers returns. And at some point, if they're desperate to have Aaron Rodgers back, which is what Matt LaFleur said, we want him back in the worst way. Well, the worst way means we'll have to pay you whatever we have to pay you, and they will. Mm -hmm. um, but you could do a lot worse than Blake Bortles as your backup. Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially with Nate. I mean, I got to know Nate a lot while he was here. Great guy. He got a lot out of Blake Bortles. Mm -hmm. When things were going right, and when things grew, when things were going wrong, it didn't work out. You assume that a lot's going to go right in Green Bay around that if Blake would play. Uh, in 2017, he put Blake in a lot of good situations to succeed, knew what he could do, knew what he couldn't do. So uh, if, if, if there's a place where Blake can produce, it would be with Nate Hackett as the offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on that situation. And we now go to OTAs as a whole. Yesterday was the first day of voluntary off-season workouts here in Jacksonville. And we were hearing all throughout the off-season of how many players were going to report. And there was all this drama between the NFL PA. And at least here in Jacksonville, we've been told there's over 70 players here present participating. And really, around the league, the numbers are pretty high. And I think it's kind of surprising because – I think some of us didn't expect that. Well, I don't know how surprising it is because, you know, the guys who make those comfortable contracts that give them real security are a minority mm -hmm. in, in this day and age of the league. The vast majority are guys who have to fight to keep their job and to keep the, the, the million and a half or $2 million salary. So those are the guys that came out overwhelmingly when the last CBA was, was up for a vote amongst the players and voted for this. They wanted the chance to be in and working. It's important for most of these guys, and they know their careers are short. They have to maximize it. Not everyone's a Fred Taylor or a Trevor Lawrence who have, at the outset of their career, many, many, many years in front of them. So it doesn't really surprise me that Denver saw 70 players or that they have really good numbers here because they're, you know, John, you know the guys who are down there are the guys who are fighting to keep their jobs. A.J. Can is a great example because yep. I saw him walking in the other day. Every year we move him out for someone else, and every year he does enough to keep his job. Well, he has to be here doing that. He can't sit idle. Well, the reality is it's always been a case where younger players show up in mass for OTAs. Mm -hmm. Usually you get very, very high attendance when there's a new offensive coordinator, new defense coordinator, new head coach, and then there are some outliers where a – program has been in place for a while of course Tom Brady didn't go to OTAs when he was in New England he knew the offense already <laughs> you know, veterans who know it veterans you know Jalen Ramsey when he was, yeah didn't he need was to here. be here didn't come here well he's he's a cornerback who's playing man most of the time how much is he going to get out of that but the linebacker who needs to learn how to call the defense and needs to know where things fit was usually here so uh, you know I think it was Peter King on his podcast uh, this week said he's following the story, but it's really a very, very low issue in the league. It's the issue we're all talking about now because it's May. I don't know that this is going to be a huge issue long term. I don't know. Because I think it's going to play like this. Well, but you have J.C. Treader, right, the, the Brown mm -hmm. starting center, who— We well, said that, but then everybody showed up this year. Well, no, no, I totally right. agree. Yeah. But, but, so, but the point that he's trying to make is there didn't used to be OTAs. When, when we were kids, Roger Staubach mm -hmm. sold tires in the offseason, right? Mm -hmm. Matt Robinson, my first broadcast partner— went back from New York to Virginia and roofed houses, okay? <laughs> I mean, the, so these guys used to work. Then Jimmy Johnson, and the salaries rose, and so when Jimmy Johnson comes in, he goes, hey, look, why aren't we doing some work in the offseason? And so he's the guy who opened the door to the offseason. And like a lot of things, you know, you open it a little bit, an inch, a crack, and then all of a sudden it's, it's wide open. Mm -hmm. And Treader made the point that when he was a young player, they were so physical in the OTAs that he broke his leg and missed his rookie season. So I do think they're trying to just pull it back a little bit. But I think the counter would be then 
you had far more physical training camp practices. This is 95 you're talking about, right? Yeah. It, it, it's when Jimmy, in the, in the early 90s. Well, yeah, 91, yeah. Well, in 95, we stood in Stevens Point and watched him hit three times a day. No, no, I know. So they're changing it around. If you're going to change that, you've got to practice somehow. Agreed. And uh, Tony Dungeon, was with the Colts, always used to say, look, you're not doing as much in training camp anymore. If you're not going to do it in a training camp, you need to get the mental work in at some point. Don't disagree. So. And then that's the key word, the mental work right. in. What, what they're trying to pull back is on some of the overly physical stuff when you're not in pads. Mm -hmm. And I do think, especially going to a 17th game this year, the players have a little bit of leverage to be able to say, hey, look what the Colts did. Did you see? Yep. The Colts negotiated with the union, John, and they're practicing this week and next, and then they're canceling everything in June. They want these two weeks on the field. So there is some room for negotiation. And I'm, I'm not saying it's an, a blockbuster story, but it's going to be interesting to watch to see mm -hmm. as we go forward what the offseason becomes. It will. And as a whole, numbers are high here in Jacksonville. A lot of players here wanting to be a part of this new installation for head coach Urban Meyer. So when we come back, we're going to meet the rookies. We know a little bit about them on the field, but what about off the field? That's coming up on Jag Drive Time. Jag's Drive Time is presented in part by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. Next Grill, everyone's invited. And at Deco, visit adecousa.com. We've been through a lot this past year, but there's light at the end of the tunnel and comfort in knowing we don't just have good things to look forward to, some have been with us all along. Because no matter what happens out in the world, our pets are always there for us. And we are always there for them. Pet Paradise, it's a new day in pet care. The time for talk is over. And a new era has begun with quarterback Trevor Lawrence. We definitely feel the love and the support and really excited just to bring some energy to the city and do everything in my power to get us back to where we want to be. So I'm super excited to be a Jag. Single game tickets are now on sale. Call 904-633-2000 or visit jaguars.com. The countdown to kickoff is on, Duval. And we want to see you at the bank. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand, from custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. Treat your pet to their own vacation while you're away on yours. At Pet Paradise, dropping off your four-legged child is like having a sleepover, minus the sleeping bags and late-night movies, of course. Surrounded by friends and doting grown-ups, sleep easier knowing Pet Paradise is always there for your precious pet. Pet Paradise official pet service provided for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Greatness is really hard, really hard. And I'm looking at a couple guys that have won it before and they understand how hard it is. That's why very few people get to that point. And you're gonna hear me talk about pushing people to the edge. And the edge is this, edge is where average stops and elite begins. Visualize that for a minute. That's why there's only one champion at the end of the year. It's not the best talent all the time. It's a group of people that do what? Learn to fight through the edge. You get to that edge, you fight through it. The best players I've had, are the ones that fight through the edge. Yeah, the hunt comes out this Thursday. It's my favorite thing we do. I love it. Usually when I get to the edge, I just stop. You stop. Yeah. That's what but makes that's you different why I'm not from playing. those guys. Right. That's, that's, that is what makes me different. That's why you are not in the hunt. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm out of that. Yeah, we won't see you I, this is, Thursday. I'm the hunted. He is an Iron Man. <laughs> I am the hunted. <laughs> yes. Check out the newest episode of The Hunt Thursday, Jaguars.com, Jaguars YouTube. You are not going to want to miss this one as we get in ready for Meet the Rookies. Let's go. Let's do it. We're going quick. Lightning round. All right. Whose favorite food is Popeye's? We're looking at the draft class here. So you have a few options. Whose favorite food is Popeye's? 
A lot of these guys are in shape, so I'm not sure how they're eating all these Popeyes. Yeah. Brian has also kept my dolphin from I was last say, week. It's, it's the dolphins' <laughs> favorite food. Um, I, so Popeyes is sort of a southern phenomenon, correct? Right. So I was going to go with a guy who played in the South, grew up in the South. So I went with Tyson Campbell. All right, John. What do you think? I'm going to go with Andre Cisco, uh, guessing because he's been in rehab and maybe had a little more time on his hands to eat. <laughs> wow, you're going deep. You're both That's are incorrect. Okay. It is Travis Etienne. What about, it's the southern thing I had right. Yeah. I just got the wrong southern guy. Yes, his favorite food is Popeyes. Oh, we got they this. Do the Louisiana thing. I yeah, should have done that. We got this tidbit from none other than Trevor Lawrence. Trevor said that Travis always ate Popeyes at Clemson. Okay. And it is his favorite food. However, Travis did say Coach Meyer wants him in the weight room and he will stop eating Popeyes. Mm. Fair enough. It's good. All right, here here is something. I had to do a little Instagram stalking to find this out. What I do best. Who has a pet bunny? Oh, I know. Can't you just imagine these dudes with a nice little pet bunny? Not a dog. Not a cat. A bunny. All right. What do we think, boys? Go for it. I'm going to go Luke Farrell. But or Walker Little because I think that can maybe Walker Little. And I went Walker Little because a big guy it just seems absurd that someone as large as him would have a bunny as a <laughs> pet okay. bunny, and not a Great Dane. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I, I see where you went there. It's another big guy. You both are wrong again. Tufeli. It's Jay Tufeli okay. has a pet bunny. Yeah, okay. pet bunny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final one. A race, and here we go. Here we go. Who just got their degree? in history, technology, and society. A lot of these guys just graduated. But who got their degree oh, this in this? This is an impressive degree. Do you Are you confident you know no, this one? No, I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good outing Go so far. It, I'm, I'm going to say Jalen Camp. I was just writing that. I, I, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Technology was the, 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 the word they got it because he's from Georgia Tech. Am, were we right? You are right. Yeah. Yes. I, I did know it. You did. Jalen can. Does he have a bunny? I was he just does not guessing. have a bunny. Right. No. He well, just got his degree. Do you know he doesn't have a bunny? Have you asked? I haven't brought okay, it up. Right. Well, okay. So maybe Next he time does. you see him. <laughs> hey, Jalen, I know we just met, but I got to ask Touch you something. Touch base on that. Okay. I'll get back to you guys. All right. We'll do better next time. One for two. Not the greatest. One That's okay. Three. One for three. Yeah. I'm good at math. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you did not go to Georgia Tech. I did not attend Georgia Tech. Go Gators. Yes. Go Gates. Okay, when we we'll come back. back, some Ozone Snapshot here on the Jaguars Digital Network. Dreamfinders Homes has a simple commitment to their home buyers. Deliver unsurpassed quality, uncompromising value, and an extraordinary level of customization you simply won't find with other home builders. With over 40 communities to choose from, you'll find a location you love and the home of your dreams. Dreamfinders has townhomes, single-family homes, and custom estate homes starting from the high 100s and a wide selection of move-in ready homes. Quality, value, customization, that's the Dreamfinders difference. Call 904-738-0165 or online at dreamfindershomes.com. Dreamfinders Homes, the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Prices subject to Change without notice. Equal housing opportunity. Why are you taking selfies with the Pepsi Mango? I'm getting back into the dating app grind. I thought if refreshing Pepsi and delicious Mango can find their surprisingly perfect match, then why can't I? Still lost? I'm metaphorically expressing who I am with this Pepsi Mango. It says I'm sweet, fun, and a little unconventional. And if they're looking for something refreshingly different, they should give me a try. Well, you are a little bit unconventional. Just enjoy the allure of the bold deliciousness that is Pepsi Mango. Try Pepsi Mango. That's what I like. <sighs> We've been through a lot this past year. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. And comfort in knowing we don't just have good things to look forward to. Some have been with us all along. Because no matter what happens out in the world, our pets are always there for us. And we are always there for them. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. This broadcast is Pet Zone friendly. B O Zone. We're going to Omaha. Jeremy, what do you got? There sure is a lot of whining over Urban Meyer's every move. Maybe we should let him coach a season or two. Then see what pans out. Well, this kind of uh, reflects back to what we said earlier in the show. And it, it I guess I realized this was going to happen. Did you? 
when you hired Urban Meyer, you know, there was so much criticism at Florida and Ohio State, and he's such a polarizing figure that it just seems like everything he does is a hot-button issue. The man can't catch a break. Yeah, and I guess the bottom line is, and I think he knows this, back in the day when uh, Tom Coughlin was here, he kind of knew it. You know, I remember him saying to me on a couple of things, look, no matter what happens, you got to win. Yeah. All this other stuff that people talk about is fine, but it's periphery. And, you know, I think the same thing with Urban Meyer. W- when you've won at a high level, as he has, he gets it. He's used to being a lightning rod for things. I guess the good news is I don't think it affects him. I don't think he worries about it at all. You know, I, I said it when they hired him. Um, and, you know, w- with the exception of a move or two, there's really not a lot to criticize. You're, you're taking over a 1-15 in 15 team. You're, you're going through a complete rebuild. There's nothing in his, in his background that is professional in nature in terms of pro football, right, because he came from the college ranks. What are you going to criticize? You have to wait to see what he does with this team, not just in the first month of the season, but the first two or three years, I think. Not that he doesn't deserve some criticism if they lose a game here or there, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. He's in the building phase of the first off season. You really have to dive deep to find something to criticize. Well, the and only that, things that have been criticized are the things that are sort of unconventional. Like the ETN thing is kind of new to the league. In a way, so we got criticized for the Chris Doyle thing. Well, you know, okay, okay, but that, um, that was legit. I guess with the ETN thing, if he'd come in and legit. not done it, then you're wasting resources. And what's he? You know, it, he was going to take a little bit of a new approach on certain things. He'd been at the college, mm-hmm. you know, he'd been at the college level. You know, this is innovative. And I guess when you're trying to be innovative, yeah. you're going to get criticized for it. So, well, yeah, let it let it let, let it breathe a little bit. Uh, you know, just real quick for Jeremy, I used to live in Omaha, Nebraska. Did I wonder you? if Big Fred's Pizza is still the best pizza in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> we can ask him. You never forget Jeremy, the name. If you're listening, Big Fred's. Well, that's all we got for Ozone Snapshots. So, Jeremy, he brought the he heat got the good question this week. He did. If there's still Big Fred, send it, Jeremy. It was an amp- it was a an amplified show. A lot of emotion. What's that? An amplified, Ah. emotional (laughs) show. All about Travis Etienne. We'll calm down next week. We've got it covered. We don't have to talk about it anymore. We'll probably talk about it again. (laughs) The Hunt comes out this Thursday, so stay to Jaguars.com and Jaguars' YouTube channel. Check out Jaguars Happy Hour this Thursday. We'll see you next week for the start of OTAs.